back to story time. Can you believe it is the beginning of summer break for many children? And there are a lot of families that plant gardens in the summer. They need the right kind of soil for those gardens to grow best. Today, our story is about soils. If you remember, last week we started a new series of lessons about the parables that Jesus used to teach us lessons about the kingdom of heaven. And we have a lot of ground to cover today, so let's get started. Our parable today is out of Matthew chapter 13, and it begins in verse 3. Listen as I read it to you. Listen, Jesus said, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath. Now, a footpath is just a dirt path where people walk a lot, and they walk so much that it becomes hard ground. It might look something like this. You can see it's all cracked, and it doesn't look like a very healthy place to grow seeds. It would be really hard to dig into that and find fertile soil. Well, where those seeds fell on this hard foot path, because the ground wasn't soft enough to receive the seeds, birds came along and began eating the seeds before they even had a chance to be growing. So that's our first kind of soil, that hard footpath soil. Other seeds, Jesus said, fell on shallow soil that was covered in rocks. So the second type of soil looked something like this. Lots of rocks there. And so because the soil was near the rocks, the seeds sprouted quickly, but the rocks made it difficult for the seeds to grow very well. So you can see that some of the plant has started to grow, but the plant can't get very good roots because the soil is too shallow for the roots to get deep and some of it's already started to die. So even though those the plants started to grow when this hot sun came out, since they didn't have deep roots, they started to die. Other seeds fell in an area where it was a place that a lot of thorny plants grow. You see, the farmers, they just scattered their seeds out. They didn't go around and plant them like we think about planting seeds nowadays. And as the farmer threw those seeds onto that thorny soil, the seeds started to grow, and they became tender plants, but the thorns started growing also, and the thorns took up so much of the nutrition from the soil and so much of the good ground that they basically choked out or crowded out the good seeds that could have grown. So those couldn't grow very well at all. Now our last group of seeds that the farmer threw out those fell on what was good soil, good fertile soil. And when they began to grow, then the plants started growing, the crops started producing, and some on some places, the Bible tells us that there was 30 times as much of an increase in the plants, or 60 times, and in some places even as much as 100 times as much as been planted began to grow. So Jesus said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. 
And the disciples asked Jesus to explain the parables to them. And this is what Jesus said. Now listen to the explanation of the parable of the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. The evil one comes and snatches away the seeds that were planted in their hearts, just like the birds snatching away the seeds here. The seed on the rocky soil that we have here represents people that hear the message and they immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last very long. They fall away as soon as they have problems. The seed that fell among the thorns over here represents people who hear God's word, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by worries of this life. And so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on the good soil right here represents those who hear and truly understand God's word. And they produce a harvest of 30 or 60 or even 100 times as much as it has been planted. So what does the seed represent? Boys and girls, the seed is the word of God. What about the four different kinds of soil that we've talked about? The four different soils are the four different ways that people react when we hear the word of God, the gospel. We can imagine that our hearts and the hearts of everyone in the whole world are like a big garden patch like one of these four types of soil. Let's talk about the different ways people respond when they hear the message of God. Jesus said one of the ways that people respond is they do not understand. Like the hard path here, the seed doesn't have a chance to take growth. Sometimes we hear the word of God and we don't get it. And we forget about it because of the evil one, the devil, that he comes away and he takes away, or comes along and takes away what we've heard before it has a chance to grow. If you put seeds outside on a sidewalk and you just laid them on that sidewalk, those seeds aren't going to grow. They're not even going to get a chance to grow before some animal comes along and eats them or takes them away. And I know that sometimes the Bible can be confusing. It is even for adults. That's why it's important for us to keep trying to understand and to ask God to help us understand the Bible. Some people don't want to know what the Bible says, and so they give up trying to understand because they don't think it's worth their time. They've decided they don't really want to know Jesus. They've chosen not to understand, and they've chosen to live in their sin. And these aren't bad people. Sometimes Christians think that sinners are bad people. The only difference between a sinner and a Christian is Christians have asked God by his grace to forgive us of our sins. We're saved by God's grace. So our first picture is hearts that are hard because of sin. The second way that we can respond to God's word is to get really excited right away about the gospel. See how those plants, they started to grow right away. Sometimes people respond right away to the Bible. They think following Jesus is a great idea. So they start trying to live like the Bible tells us. But then something happens. Problems arise or maybe they're persecuted or they're judged for believing in God and so they stop following him. Why do they do that? Let's think about our garden picture again. If you plant seeds in the gravel, there isn't enough good soil for the roots to go down deep and get strong. Plants need good, deep, rich roots 
and soil to help them to stay strong. If you don't have good roots on your plants, rain can wash them away. The wind can blow them away. They can't get the nutrition that they need from the soil. So without roots, plants die quickly. People who hear the word of God and they get really excited about it right away, don't always have deep roots and understanding and experience that they need to stick with Jesus. So when hard times come along or things get rough, then they fall away. So we're gonna put fall away when problems come. The third group has some interesting problems too. The third group also hears the word of God. It gets down into their hearts and they think it's a good idea also. But when they haven't been able to be in church or they go out into the world and they start worrying about making money to pay bills or any other problems that they might be facing, you know, think about things that people worry about. They might worry about how to pay their bills or how to get their schoolwork done. Maybe they're missing someone and they're worried about someone being healthy. Those are all problems or worries that we, we all have. But God says something in his word about how to deal with worries. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Give all your worries and cares to God. Or he cares about you. So instead of letting our worries choke out our belief in God like these thorns choked out these plants, then we should go to God with our problems and say, God, I'm worried about this. Please help me. And he will. So there's one more type of soil that we're going to talk about here, this fourth type again. And according to Matthew 13, 23, the good soil is the people who really understand God's word and they produce fruit. What kind of fruit do you think we might produce if we really understand God's message about the kingdom of heaven? Well, some of the good fruit that we produce when we have the good soil are things like love for others, joy, even in rough times, peace. We produce the good fruit of wanting to spend time with God in prayer and in reading our Bibles. And we tell other people about how much God loves them. Those are important good fruits. Let's talk about the point of this parable, boys and girls. There's lots of good points about it. But today we're going to focus on this one in particular. We want to be the good soil. Are some people just born to be good soil and some aren't? The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 that God wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. Now I can't speak for everyone else, but speaking for myself, I have to say that at one time or another in my life, I have been all four of these types of soil. I've been mad at God. So I was like a hard, rocky soil. My heart was hard because I was angry with God. I have gotten involved in being a good Christian, wanting to be what God wants me to be, but I, sometimes I let other things become more time consuming than what they should have been so I didn't get good grounding, good roots into the word of God. There's been times when I've worried about situations when I should have been turning things over to God. And this one right here, the one that we all strive to be, there's also times when I've asked God to help me be the best that he wants me to be. Not because I can do anything on my own, but because God helps me. Now we know that 
There's different kinds of soil, and we could be any of those kinds of soil. We have a responsibility to try to do our best to be the good soil and not choose sin, not choose sin, but stick with reading our Bible and asking God and other Christians, our mom and dad, if they're Christians, to help us pray about things that we worry about, to help us pray about being the kind of soil that God wants us to be. We can read our Bible. We can trust what it says, that it's true. We can be patient, and we can let our words work so that they please God. We can pray and ask God to help us to be strong in tough times. The third soil, that thorny worries of that, we can pray. 1 Peter 5, 7, where God tells us to give all of our worries to him. <laughs> okay, start out, we can pray. We can pray that God will make us strong in tough times. And if we're like the third soil, we can pray 1 Peter 5, 7, and turn our worries over to God. We give all our worries to God. We trust him to take care of us. These things aren't easy to do, but we need to do our best with God's help to have our hearts soft and ready to hear the word of God. And there's one more really important thing that I want you to know before we wrap up today. In this story, we picture God as the farmer the one who's throwing the seeds onto all these types of soil. God doesn't just pick the good soil. God wants everyone to hear the good news about his son, Jesus. So he tells everyone, God knows what kind of soil we are, and he knows our hearts. And even when we are not the good soil, God still plants the seeds of his word and his truth in us. And as Christians... It's our job to tell everyone, too. Not just the people that are easy to talk to, but everyone. We don't get to pick who we share the seeds of truth with. God says we should tell the whole world about that. Let's have some prayer right now. Father, as we come before you today, Lord, we know that one of the lessons you want us to learn is to always try to be the good soil, ones that understand your word and tell others about you. Father, I know in my own life, I have trouble with that. I ask that you would forgive me of those things that keep me from being the good soil you want me to be. I pray, Father, that you would help me to understand your word, help me to apply it to the way I live my life, and help me to tell others about how much Jesus loves them. In your name I ask and I thank you, Lord. Amen. So boys and girls, this morning we have a coloring picture that you can download about the four types of soil and the sower who planted the seeds. As you are helping look at the plants grow outside this week, or if you have your own garden and you're working in the soil, I pray that God would help you to remember he loves you, and he wants you to be the best you can be for him. He wants you to be that good soil. I'll see you next time. Bye.